Hi, my name is Angela Betsine and I'm the writer of Children of the Black Skirt. I grew up in Rockhampton in central Queensland and, and nearby there was an orphanage. It had been run as an orphanage by the Sisters of Mercy for, uh, for about a hundred years and I had the opportunity to visit that place um, because it was being operated as, uh, as a camp facility. So I spent a couple of weekends um, on school camp there and I was really struck even as an eight-year-old by the, the, the melancholy of that place. And it, it was a, an experience that remained in my mind for a long time. Uh, and I'm also particularly interested in stories of lost children. It's a thematic thread that runs uh, through, through a lot of my work. So the opportunity to write a play about orphanages and, and through that to explore the history of Australia from the perspective of children was very appealing to me. I always have a, a very extensive research process. Uh, research is very important to me. So I, I researched this, this particular play for about a year and a half before, before beginning to write. Uh, there were a couple of key texts that, that really inspired me. One in particular was uh, a text called The Country of Lost Children by Peter Pierce. Um, Peter Pierce is an academic writer and he talks uh, and references uh, a number of, of stories of lost children uh, in our literature and our film. And, um, you know, for example, the, late, the Lindy Chamberlain story, uh, the Beaumont children's story, uh, A Picnic at Hanging Rock, um, and, and other stories like that. So that was a key text in inspiring this piece. Uh, I also read uh, Charles Dickens' uh, Oliver Twist uh, and, and many fairy tales and, and particularly uh, Shock-Headed Peter, the German fairy tale book, um, which were, were key inspirations in the, in the style of, um, uh, it influenced the style of Children of the Black Skirt. I guess the main themes of Children of the Black Skirt or theme is, is power uh, and how power can be abused. Um, and also the cyclical nature of abuse. I think I think they are the, the key themes and and, and and issues in the in the piece. Um, but the, the 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 play explores a number of issues: uh, institutionalisation, the effect that that has on on, on, on people, uh, the stories of immigration to Australia, colonisation. Uh, child slavery. There are so many issues in the piece that we explore in, in just a short period of time, 50 minutes in fact. I guess one of the reasons we chose to use, uh, uh, to utilise a fairy tale style or a heightened gothic style to tell these stories um, was the fact that the, the research that we were doing was so harrowing and so graphic. Um, the stories of abuse in some of these institutions was, was really very confronting to us and I needed to find uh, a language with which to, to tell these stories um, that, that was quite removed but, but didn't pull any punches as well. So the, the fairy tale style sort of appealed to me and I think the stories of lost children, the children lost in, in the Australian bush are very fairy tale esque They remind me of stories of children lost in the woods in, in, in Germany as well. So that was the, the reason for that. The Black Skirt is a silent character. Um, because I think she is made more powerful through that choice. Um, she's, uh, she's, I think she's one of the most formidable characters I've ever written, um, and I'm particularly proud of her, um, her, 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 her poetic qualities. So I think she's, she's a metaphor as well as a character. And it's interesting because in very early drafts of the, um, of the character, she, was actually, she did actually speak, which seems quite extraordinary now to think of the, the black skirt speaking, and almost blasphemous to think of it. Um, and we, we found on the floor, in collaboration with the actor playing the role, that, uh, that she was actually much more powerful silent, so that was a choice that we made. I guess my favourite moment in the play is Harold Horrocks' inspection. Uh, I love this moment because it's the first, it's an acknowledgement of the audience in the space and the relationship between the audience and the actors and, and reminds us that this is a live experience. Um, and I particularly uh, enjoy the fact that it, it, is, it is actually quite a light moment. It's quite a, 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 a very funny moment for the audience, but then that uh, descends into something quite, quite awful and quite graphic. Um, and, and disturbing and I think it's a, it's a moment that remains with the audience and it certainly remains with me. I actually wrote Children of the Black Skirt very quickly. 
after extensive research for, for about a year and a half, I, I wrote Children of the Black Skirt, or at least the first draft of Children of the Black Skirt, in about three weeks. Um, I wrote the stories very quickly, the individual stories, um, but then it was always a process of redrafting and, and, and refining and perfecting. And I think writing is all about rewriting. So uh, I think Children of the Black Skirt went through about 14 or 15 drafts before it, it, it got to the point that it is now. My favourite writers, uh, I've got so many. Um, in terms of, of, of short story writers or novelists, I love Gabriel Garcia Marquez, I love Angela Carter. Um, I, I love playwrights uh, Andrew Bovell, who's an Australian writer who, who really explores the Gothic uh, in, in uh, Australian life and society. Uh, I love Carol Churchill. Um, so many, there's so many to, to, to name. The thing I like most about being a writer is the solitary nature of writing. I like to be alone, I like to be alone with my own thoughts. Um, I love the thrill of, of, of creating a story out of what seems like thin air but, it, but is always um, emerging from, from research and from uh, my sense of, of what's happening in the world. Uh, but at the same time I also, the, the least, my least favourite thing about being a writer is actually being alone. Um, it is quite difficult on a daily basis um, and that's why I love to write plays, uh, to, to write for theatre because it's collaborative and I have the opportunity to work with, with actors and with directors and sound designers and designers and I love that. I think it would be very lonely to be a novelist or a poet. I write plays for young audiences because I think they're the most uh, exciting audience. They're, the, they're almost on the precipice of, of, of life and they're yet to, to confirm their decisions and their, their beliefs, I think. Um, and that's, I think that's a really exciting audience. I think they're open to, to innovations in terms of, of ways of telling stories, of the kinds of stories um, I want to tell and so I find them an incredibly receptive audience, so much more so than, than 60 somethings. The advice that I would give to a young person thinking about becoming a writer is, is simply to write and to write as often as possible, uh, to store up ideas and uh, writing is all, all about rewriting and uh, it's really important not to throw out your initial idea or your, your initial draft of something. Um, put it in a box, put it in a drawer if you have to. but um, but keep it and you know often your early work is it's, it's, it's kind of raw and a bit exciting but a bit flawed as well so I think um, just keep 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 working on it and um, and yeah good luck. <laughs>